This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This is a type of insurance that ensures that your income continues in the event that you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important. So important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. Today I have a very special guest. She's going to tell us all about the field of psychiatry as well as why she went into it and some tips for you guys. Doc Dr. Uh, Messenger, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody who you are. Hi, well, I'm Dr. Dion. I'm a psychiatrist practicing here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I uh, have attended, uh, I've actually done everything in Atlanta. I'm originally from New York, but I came to Emory University for undergrad, went to Morehouse School of Medicine for medical school, and then came right back to Emory for my residency. And I've been doing everything here. I love Atlanta and it's just, um, it's been wonderful. So I, I practice, I do community psychiatry in addition to, um, I also have a private practice and I'm also an author. So lots of hands in different pots, which I really enjoy. It gives it a lot of variety. Awesome. Uh, for the people who don't know what a psychiatrist is, can you briefly explain what that is? So we focus on mental health. You know, we're from from the shoulders up. We focus on the brain and um, we treat a variety of disorders ranging from schizophrenia to major depressive disorder to bipolar disorder. So we're just focused on the mental health symptoms. And as psychiatrists, um, we focus on psychopharmacology, which means the medication treatment of the disorders, but we also can do therapy. And um, and that's a common question that I get is like, what's the difference between you and a psychologist? Yeah. A psychiatrist is an MD, and um, that means we can prescribe medication, but also um, we just, just a different a different scope of practice as opposed to a psychologist who may be a PhD. Okay. Um, and what was it about psychiatry that got you interested in? What, why did you choose to uh, go into it? You know, when I first went into school, I wanted to be an ophthalmologist, believe it or not. Oh, uh, <laughs> you do anatomy, you go through all the different systems. I was like, you know, the eye, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Um, in mind throughout medical school, um, I rotated through all these different rotations. And I think I went to my third year with an open mind and just kind of saw what I would like. Mm. I had already had an interest in behavioral health because I majored in psychology in undergrad. So I already kind of, I came in with an initial interest, but then when I did the psychiatry rotation, my third year, towards the end of my third year of medical school, I just kind of had that light bulb moment. And I said, you know, this is something that I'm really interested in. I just found not only the disorders fascinating, but also the treatment and just the difference that you can see in terms of when somebody is treated versus not being treated. Um, so I just found that very gratifying and, and that I just stuck with it um, and went from there. Gotcha. And you said you're currently in private practice. Um, yeah. what, what is a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? How do, how do your day look? Like? So a typical day for me is like I usually start around 9 o'clock and I usually go to about 4 or 5 o'clock. Because I do primarily outpatient, meaning that I don't work in the hospital, um, my, my daytime schedule is very, very set. So, you know, I set appointments and have patients come in and see me. Um, I don't take any call because I'm primarily outpatient. Um, and for me, uh, you know, if I'm seeing a new patient, I usually see them for a good hour. If I see like a follow-up, I usually give 30 minutes. Um, and that's just for me to get kind of a full history and everything. Um, but usually that's the span of my day, seeing patients throughout the day and from about nine to five. Mm -hmm. So to become a psychiatrist, it takes, you know, four years of medical school and four years of residency. And do most people do fellowships at all? You do have the option to do fellowships. I have quite a few colleagues who went into it. Uh, one of the most popular fellowships is child psychiatry, and it's actually child and adolescent psychiatry, which would add an, another year. So instead of four, year, four years of residency, it would be five years. If you um, want to focus with 
treating kind of 18 and under, but a lot of child psychiatrists, they actually treat all ages. Um, so, but with that specialty, they have the option to be kind of specialized in treating kids if they want, but they also have the option of treating adults. Another really popular fellowship is forensics, um, yeah. where you kind of work in terms of with the legal system and deciding somebody's competent to stand trial. Um, geriatric psychiatrists, another big one. So you work with, you know, the older population and you see more diagnoses that are more related to maybe dementia or just even just, you know, major depression starting later in life. Mm -hmm. So there's actually pretty, you know, there's a pretty interesting lot, pretty interesting, um, I should say, variety of fellowships that you can go into. Mm -hmm. One thing that I was interested in was consult and liaison, and that means that you act as the consult psychiatrist for the other specialties. So the surgery floor, the OBGYN, and if they have a patient who has some psychiatric issues, they call you as the consult. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what was appealing to me about that is that you still kind of got that hospital feeling and got to work as a you know liaison between other specialties, and I thought that was pretty interesting. So if I were going to do a fellowship, that was one of the ones that I was considering. Um, you know, it's not even necessary. It just all depends on what you like. And that's what I love about psychiatry is you have such a huge variety of what you can do. I just did my four years and I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> you know, at that time, um, I was ready to start practicing. And, um, and, you know, it's just been one of the best decisions choosing this particular specialty because I, I really have such a huge variety of all the things I can do. Okay. And once you're done with all of your training, your medical school and college, medical school and your residency, how much can a psychiatrist make? I know it varies by location and practice type, but how much can a psychiatrist make? You know, it's a very good question. And that's a lot of people are scared to ask that question. It really can vary based on where you live. But one thing is that if you do primarily private practice or you do inpatient psychiatry, now with that, the schedule is a little bit different because you may have to take a call, you may have to work weekends, you know, you can make 300000 plus. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, that takes a lot of hard work. But if you want to stick with more academic psychiatry, or even just more in the community based, like working in community mental health centers, then I would think that's more close to like 180, maybe 170. Mm -hmm. So it all based on which, um, which kind of which kind of genre you want to go into, like which kind of psychiatry and what kind what kind of work you want to do. But I would definitely say like forensics, I definitely think has a little bit more of a higher pay rate um, because you do get paid per case and you get kind of a little bit more compensation on that end. But forensics, inpatient, where you work in the hospital, as well as just doing primarily private practice, you can make 300 and up. Hmm. Um, but, you know, if you want to do more just kind of nine to five, you work in a clinic, then you can have a very set schedule. Okay. And in terms of what's kind of... What's kind of the latest in the uh, news lately is physician suicide, burnout rate, depression within physicians. I know you see a lot of that. How do psychiatrists, you're on the end, uh, the receiving end of that. How do you guys deal with that in terms of you hear all these issues, everything is laid out to you when a patient's come to you. How do you deal with that as a psychiatrist? You no, know, it's a big issue. As a matter of fact, in my private practice, I have quite a few patients who are actually other physicians. Um, so it's something that we encounter a lot. Um, I've worked with Emory, and I'm actually giving a talk July 2nd to all of the incoming residents about burnout and the signs to look out for. So it's something we encounter, and we try to be proactive with it. Um, just, you know, educating other physicians about signs of burnout. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, with medical school and going straight to training, we're kind of used to that work, 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 work. And yeah. sometimes it's hard for us to take time away and realize it's time for us to kind of step back. Um, but definitely something I see in my practice and, you know, from surgeons to family practice, I have a lot of physicians who I see as patients. And I think just being proactive um, where, you know, giving the same advice that you give your patients, you need to take it yourself. Um, well, that's what I say to my, my physicians that, you know, if you notice that you have dealing with anxiety or you're dealing with burnout, which can lead to depression, the earlier we treat it, the better. And I think, you know, just trying to do education and promoting kind of recognizing that, I should say, is, is the best way to handle it. Gotcha. And outside of medicine, as a psychiatrist, you're an author as well. Um, can you talk about some of the other things that you're doing outside of medicine, as well as your, your, your book that you wrote? 
Yeah, sure. So I really like, and just like I was talking about this burnout, I really like education. And I noticed that especially with psychiatry, just a huge stigma. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing that I really enjoy is talking on a larger platform. So, um, you know, I do television, radio, just talking about just, you know, really, it's really just education, just talking about like symptoms of depression, bipolar disorder, or signs of burnout, PTSD, but just really educating the public is something that I've found to be really rewarding because a lot of people are scared to go to a psychiatrist's office. Mm -hmm. So they're more likely to take in information from me being on a television show, talking mm -hmm. about their symptoms, um, rather as opposed to them going into a psychiatrist's office because a lot of people have that stigma of only crazy people go to see psychiatrists. So, I have really enjoyed taking a broader platform where I can educate kind of the masses or educate kind of the public about symptoms of certain disorders and when they should seek help, um, what are the options for help, because I know that that's been a really, really effective way to promote mental wellness and also just education overall. Gotcha. Um, if someone wanted to be a psychiatrist or a physician in general, uh, what kind of advice would you, uh, you have for them? Uh, my first piece of advice is do it because you want to do it. It is a long road, and if you're doing it for the notoriety of it or you're doing it because your parents want you to do it, you're, it's not, you're, you're going to fizzle out. So I always say for medicine, um, it's something you have to want to do because that's what's going to keep the fuel in your tank. Um, but, you know, with psychiatry specifically, if somebody wants to pursue that, and I have quite a few medical students or even – even undergrads who come up to me and say, you know, I'm really interested in psychiatry, I say, go for it. I, I'm, I'm a really big advocate of going into the specialty because I just found it to be even better than I expected in terms of the range of what I can do mm -hmm. and just the, the different arenas that I work in within psychiatry. It's been really, really wonderful. And I think it's been a great balance where I get to see a lot of different patients, but I also get to stay pretty sharp in terms of having such a spectrum of patients that I, I get to learn as, you know, new treatments come into play. Okay. Um, three last questions that I asked all my guests. You can give okay. one or two word answer. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Go to the movies. Okay. <laughs> what was the last, uh, last movie you saw? Oh, this movie called Beast, which was really interesting. And it was good because I was seeing bad movies for a while, so that was a really good one. Okay. Kind of really <laughs> All right. And uh, what is your favorite food? Hamburgers. Hamburgers? All right, awesome. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Mester, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and kind of enlightening us on the world of psychiatry. Um, lots of students have been asking uh, for this uh, interview here, so really mm -hmm. uh, excited to uh, get it out there. Um, if anybody wanted to reach you, how, how can I get a hold of you? Well, my website is dionmetzgermd.com, and you can actually email me directly through my site. Um, once again, d-i-o-n-m-e-t-z-g-e-r.m-d. I mean, d-i-o-n-m-e-t-z-g-e-r-m-d.com. Okay. And yeah, I, I'm always really happy to talk with students, and I, I teach also at the Free Medical School here in Georgia, so I'm talking to students all the time. Um, yeah, just welcome the questions, and anybody, if you want to talk about psychiatry, or just want to talk about going to medicine, period. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and how can we find your uh, book as well? Um, Modern Trophy Wife is the name of my book, and I actually um, co-authored it with a colleague of mine I went to medical school and residency with, oh, and nice. she's a child psychiatrist, um, Dr. Io Gavin. ModernTrophyWife.com, you can find it. It's available on Amazon, and um, even details about the book is also on my website as well. So, okay, awesome, and I'll put the links to all those, uh, the links to all those, those websites in the description. Well, thank Excellent. you so much for uh, joining me tonight, and thank you for being an inspiration to uh, all of us out here. Uh, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.